Hi everyone, this is Alex from Salmonella Place and today's pharmacology lecture is going to be on the characterization of agonist receptor interaction. So we're going to be speaking about occupation, affinity, the dose response curve, potency and efficacy. So on our first slide we're going to talk about agonist receptor interaction. So what does this mean, huh? Okay, well basically the agonist and the receptor bind together which is reversible so it means they can unbind and bidirectional. So here you have the agonist plus the receptor which is reversible and bidirectional that's why there's an arrow here and here and it forms an agonist receptor complex. Uh, by forming this complex you then have receptor activation so this little star here is just showing that the complex is activated and that causes signal transduction so leading from the activation you get an effect. So guys now I'm gonna talk a little bit about occupancy this is the number of receptors which are occupied by the agonist. So it's how many agonists plus receptors uh, become agonist receptor complexes and then become activated. What do we tell that by? The occupancy. Now this depends on the concentration of the ligand and the ligand's affinity for the receptor. And we tell this by the Hill-Langmuir equation. So P is the occupancy, and this is equivalent to the number of agonists divided by the total number of receptors, which is also equal to the concentration of agonists, divided by the agonist concentration plus the dissociation constant, KD. What is KD determined by? KD is the ratio of agonists and receptors that reversibly become agonist and receptor complexes. So KD is this arrow here. So now let's move on to affinity. This is described by the disassociation constant which is inversely proportional to the affinity of the agonist. So therefore if you have a high disassociation constant you have a low affinity of the ligand. And this is equivalent to dynamic equilibrium. So uh, right here you can see the linear scale of affinity. Um, so the higher affinity ligand um, binds um, at a lower to a higher extent at a lower concentration, whereas the lower affinity ligand binds at a lower extent at the same concentration as one with higher affinity. Now I'm just going to draw because unfortunately I couldn't find a picture um, a semi logarithmic scale which would look more like this. The higher affinity ligand would be like this and the lower affinity ligand would be like this. So basically it's the same as the linear, it's showing you the same thing but just with a different curve. The semi logarithmic has an S curve whereas the linear scale is called linear because it has a linear curve, like such. So as you can see here, just to repeat again, at a lower concentration, um, you have higher binding for a higher affinity ligand. At a higher concentration, because there is a lower affinity, um, you have the lower affinity ligand. The dose-response curve 
is the relationship between the agonist concentration and the evoked response. So this quantifies the drug effect and it shows the relationship between the effect and the occupancy. So here at the bottom you can see that this is the ligand concentration and here you have the fraction of bound agonist stem receptors or the occupancy. And obviously at a lower concentration you can see a higher uh, occupancy on uh, the first uh, curve and then the second one is also um, a lower affinity um, and the difference between the two curves vertically speaking is the efficacy. Now I'm going to go into what efficacy is later on and the horizontal difference here is the potency which I will also go on to in my next slide. Here is the EC50 and this is when at 50% of uh, saturation or ligand concentration you have um, effective uh, agonist concentration. So this is the concentration that is needed to produce 50% of the maximum effect. So that's when the Emax is at 50% just to let you know what is in this graph, but I will go into it in more detail in the following slides. The potency is the concentration needed to evoke the same response of another drug. So let's say, for example, one drug needed 50 milligrams to evoke a response, and then this, another drug, which was similar, needed 100 milligrams um, to evoke uh, that same response as the first drug. So one drug which needed um, a lesser amount of milligrams would be more potent than a drug that needed 100 milligrams. The discrepancies between the drugs are compensated for with increased dosage, as I mentioned before with my example of the 50 and 100 milligrams. The EC50, or effective comp uh, concentration at 50% is the effective agonist concentration which is needed to produce 50% of the maximum effect. So as I mentioned on the previous slide it's Emax is at 50%. So let's just draw it here. 50 would be about here. So this drug is more potent than this drug because the E50 is at a lower concentration, whereas the same effect of this drug needs a much higher concentration. So high, highly potent, not so potent. The efficacy of a drug is the magnitude of effect produced by that drug. Intrinsic activity is the ability of a drug to elicit a response. This shows us the efficacy of a drug. So these two are directly related. Now, this can be shown by the type of drug that is used, which can either be a full agonist or a partial agonist. A full agonist has an intrinsic activity which is equivalent to one. A full antagonist has an intrinsic activity which is equivalent to zero because it does not elicit a response. It gives the opposite to a response, a negative response. Now a partial agonist has an intrinsic activity which is less than one because it is not working at full capacity. So it's going to elicit a response but not as great as a full agonist. So you can see here a full agonist at a lower concentration. Let's see 
at the 50% mark just here. It needs a lower concentration to elicit that response, whereas the partial agonist, it actually doesn't go on this graph, but it needs a much greater concentration to elicit the same response. So as you can see here, the gap in both concentration and activity of the agonist. Um, I also would like to mention um, about the partial agonists that they have a dual nature. They are agonists in the presence of other partial agonists, but they can be classed as antagonists in the presence of a full agonist. Why? because they compete for spots with the full agonists and they can weaken the effect of the full agonist. So therefore, uh, they are limiting the efficacy of that drug, so limiting the response produced by a drug, the magnitude of that response, because the full agonists by themselves could produce a bigger effect. But, like I said before, because the partial agonists are competing for spots and some of them will get spots over the full agonists, they're lessening the maximum effect of the drug. Therefore, they are classed as antagonists. The receptor reserve is the difference between the effect and the occupancy. So the percentage of occupancy gives a certain percentage of effect and the percentage of receptors that are not used. So that is equivalent to the receptor reserve percentage. So this is the percentage of occupancy gives a certain percentage of effect And there is a percentage of receptors which are not used, and this gives the receptor reserve percentage. Okay, so the intrinsic efficacy, which is named E, shows the effective activation of the receptor by the agonist. The concentration response relationship is determined by the following equation. You have the intrinsic activity, which is E, divided by the maximum intrinsic activity, which is E max, which is equivalent to F, which is the signal transduction, and that is times the agonist concentration divided by the agonist concentration plus the dissociation constant, that's all in its own little bracket, plus the dissociation constant times the total number of receptors times the intrinsic activity. So, the maximum effect is equivalent to the signal transduction, or F. Now, occupancy, let's just put a bracket here, occupancy plus the receptor number plus intrinsic efficacy is times by the signal transduction. That's just to simplify this equation. Okay, now efficacy, sorry, yeah, efficacy is dependent on the intrinsic activity. And potency, 
is intrinsic activity and disassociation constant dependent. So the occupancy response relationship describes the difference between full agonists and it monitors the down regulation of receptors. So prolonged agonism, this is equivalent to receptor down regulation. Super agonism produces the full response with full occupancy. Full agonists have different occupancies, receptor reserves and efficacies, and this is due to the intrinsic efficacy. The dose-response relationship shows the therapeutic versus toxic effects. The safety margin is the toxic dose at 50%, divided by the effective dose at 50%. So here, what you can see is the therapeutic dose curve, the toxic dose curve, and the lethal dose curve. By toxic, I mean poisonous, and obviously there will be adverse side effects ranging from mild to severe, but lethal actually means death. So down here, you see effective dose at 50%, uh, toxic dose and lethal dose. So the safety margin is between the toxic and the therapeutic uh, curves. The therapeutic index is the lethal dose at 50% divided by the effective dose at 50%. So this would be the therapeutic index. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about inverse agonism. So this means that there is no endogenous agonist or drug. However, there is a degree of receptor activation present. Now this is a decreased level of constitute activity and this agonist behaves as an antagonist. Now we have a two-state theory, which I'm going to explain to you with this diagram here. This is the first receptor, this is the second receptor, this is the antagonist, this is the inverse agonist, and this is the agonist, okay? Now the agonist disturbs the equilibrium. So as you can see here, this agonist binds to receptor 1 and disturbs the equilibrium between the first state of the receptor and the second state of the receptor. So it increases the activity <clears throat> of conversion here. So this is going to be a bigger conversion from state 1 to state 2. Now the antagonist equalizes the effect because it binds and inhibits both the first state and the second state of the receptor. The inverse agonist, which is here, binds to the receptor in the second state and causes a left shift in the graft, which is here. So we have the activity level and the concentration of the drug. The agonist is here, a partial agonist would be to a lesser extent here. This is the baseline, so the minimum activity, and the inverse agonist is here, acting as an antagonist, because it prevents, almost like a partial agonist, it prevents the agonist from increasing um, the Emax 